So, Hornets season preview. They finished with a 33-39 and record last year, which was good for 10th in the East. Um, they are 22nd in offense and 18th in defense. So, you know, a team that I wouldn't say has one particular strength. Maybe it's their transition game, but um, a solid all-round team. And in the, they lost in the first round the play into the Pacers. Um, so didn't go far, but the expectations were pretty low. And given some of the improvements they saw between internal improvements with guys like Terry Rozier, um, Miles Bridges, and P.J. Washington, as well as LaMelo Ball winning Rookie of the Year, I'd say it was a pretty good year for them. In the draft, I thought they really did well. They drafted James Booknight at pick number 11, who is a shot-creating shooting guard. They also drafted Kai Jones with the 19th pick. I believe they traded for that pick. And he is an athletic big with lots of potential. And they also took JT Thor in the second round, who I don't know much about, but uh, seems like someone who, who has a high ceiling and is sort of a boomer bust prospect. Uh, they also traded for Mason Plumley on draft night, which I thought was a good solid move as they were compensated with picks and he is a solid starting slash rotational center. In free agency, they lost Devontae Graham, but managed to get back a first round pick from the Pelicans, which I thought was just great business from them uh, to, to get rid of a guy who they weren't going to keep anyways and to get a first round pick I thought was incredible. Um, they uh, didn't bring back Malik, Malik Monk, and they also lost uh, Cody Zeller. So uh, lost a few guys, but they did make some signings. They signed Kelly Oubre to a two-year, $26 million contract, and they also signed Ish Smith to be the backup point guard and sort of to replace Devontae Graham, though they do have very different skill sets. And they also extended Terry Rozier to a four-year, $97 million, clearly signaling that LaMelo and Rozier are the backcourt of the future. And speaking of the starting backcourt, let's uh, go to a projected lineup. Uh, point guard, I have LaMelo Ball. I think he is the future of this team. Averaged 16 points, 6 rebounds, and 6 assists last year, winning Rookie of the Year. And I thought he was really good, a lot better than I expected, even though I thought he should have been the number one overall pick and I did think he was going to win Rookie of the Year. I think the shooting was really better than people expected, and he was making three-pointers consistently. The playmaking was also great. He's already one of the best passers in the NBA. Um, great vision, great feel, um, all that. Um, defensively, he wasn't great, but wasn't terrible. Um, pretty much sort of what you would expect. But I think offensively, um, he really got a lot of people talking about how high his ceiling is. And I think his ceiling is the Hornet ceiling um, because he's the guy who really has that superstar potential between um, the playmaking and what he can be in the future as a point guard who can both score and playmake. I think uh, some of the floater stuff was really impressive. Um, being able to score um, from different places on the floor. I think some some improvements he could make um maybe some more threes off the dribble if he's improved that um also being you know more consistent in his finishes around big guys around the rim sometimes he'll just throw up some wild, wild floaters or layups and sometimes they do come off and he is certainly a very creative finisher and player but uh sometimes you know just needs to use his body shield the ball and uh finish strong so yeah Overall, was very impressed by LaMelo in his first year, and I expect him to have another good season, um, especially with a full training camp and offseason to work with uh, NBA coaches. At the two, Terry Rozier, they gave him that contract. Um, his stats last year, 20 points, 4 rebounds, 4 assists. Um, I think um, he's developed into a legit 20-point scorer, and... Um, it's something that not a lot of people expected. He can He's sort of the guy, they, their go-to guy in late game situations. Uh, um, his pull-up jumper is really good. Um, he's a solid passer. He's a good defender. Um, I think, you know, they did pay him quite a bit, but that's sort of the going rate for a quality starting guard um, who can pay, play alongside LaMelo. It sort of works. LaMelo's a bit taller, but he's also clearly the number one ball handler. Um, and I think Rozier is more of an off-ball guy um, and will be more of an off-ball guy coming off screens um, and also doing some scoring. 
at the three, Gordon Hayward averaged 20 points, six rebounds, and four assists last season. Um, just a really good all-round player. Um, can really do it all between scoring in all three levels, playmaking, solid defender. I think the only question is just the health. I mean, I hope he's able to stay healthy because if he does, I think that raises the ceiling of this Hornets team quite a bit. Um, If he's consistently there, um, making shots, making the right pass, and, you know, he is, I would say, still the best player on this team when healthy, but he also feels like sort of a glue guy, someone who connects the whole starting lineup. He can make passes in transition. He can, uh, you know, shoot the three ball, Um, and yeah... I really like Gordon Hayward. I just hope he can stay healthy. At the four, it'll be Miles Bridges or P.J. Washington. I don't know who's going to start, so I'll just talk about both. With Bridges, I think he's a great athlete, and he pairs super well with LaMelo in terms of his ability to catch lobs, his ability to run the floor. And he's also showed some three-point shooting and some playmaking, uh, which I really like. Personally, I would start him over P.J. Washington um, just because I think... Uh, right now, he gives them a little bit more in terms of athleticism and all that. Um, P.J. Washington is also a great player, though. Um, you know, I think with him, maybe there's a little bit more offensively in terms of the shooting and maybe a little bit off the dribble. I also think he's probably a better defender, uh, good size. Um, he, he's also a solid player. So we'll see who they start, whether it's Bridges or Washington. Then at center, it'll probably be Mason Plumley. Averaged 10 points, 9 rebounds, and 4 assists last season. I think he's a really solid big uh, to be in the rotation. I mean, I think, you know, sometimes they might go with Bridges and P.J. Washington as the front court. But uh, when they need a center, I think he can grab rebounds. uh, He can pass quite well. Average 4 assists a game. I think uh, he fits well with the team. Uh, The bench, uh, Ish Smith, backup point guard. I think he's a solid backup point guard. Can play make. Uh, run the offense when your primary guys are out. Um, Yeah, he's a good backup point guard. James Booknight, uh, he's a rookie, so we'll have to see. But I think some of the shot creation, um, he can be a really good scorer someday, and we'll see what his impact is immediately. Kelly Oubre averaged 15 points and 6 rebounds uh, last season. I think one of the questions is uh, definitely the 3-point shot, whether it's falling consistently or not, uh, changes his value Um, and the amount of minutes he's going to get significantly. Um, But I do think he fits well between being a solid defensive player, being a good athlete, someone who can run the floor with LaMelo. Um, Yeah, I think he fits well, and uh, we'll see. He's only on a two-year deal, so we'll see how he plays and, um, you know, how many minutes he's getting, how the fit is and all that. And then backup center, um, we'll see. But I I just want to talk about Kai Jones, the other rookie, I think maybe he could be coming into some backup center uh, minutes. I think a lot of the backup center minutes will go to Bridges or P.J. Washington. But I think with Kai Jones, I think athletically he does fit the profile of this team, of a team that can really run and um, you know be a good team in transition and play at a high pace. Um, I think for a center, I think he showed some off-the-dribble stuff in the summer league. He had a massive dunk, so... We'll have to see with Kai Jones, but I think he definitely has a high ceiling. Um, in terms of this team overall, I think they're a versatile team, which is good. Um, just with the options off the bench, like Ubre and PJ Washington, uh, they can play small, they can uh, play big, they can play in a multitude of different ways. They can get a lot of shooters out there, they can get uh, a lot of athleticism out there. So I think that'll be interesting to see how uh, the coach. Um, James Borrego plays with that. I think year two Lomelo should be interesting. I said, I think, you know, he's going to be the one who, um, you know, we see how high this team ceiling is. It depends on Lomelo. Um, and then my last question is probably if they can get into the top 10 in offense or defense. Um, I'd say it would probably be, be, probably be, probably be offense between Lamelo hopefully taking another step. Rozier, Hayward, Bridges. I think they can they can probably be a decent offensive team, uh, but we'll just have to see. In terms of my prediction, I think the nine or ten seed. Um, you know, there's a lot of good teams in the East. I think they'll be better than last year, but I also think the rest of the Eastern Conference will be better than last year. So 
we'll have to see. But anyways, thanks for watching this video, guys. Leave a like, subscribe to this channel for more NBA content, and I'll see you guys next time.